Okay, we're live. Uh, all you right. Can, you can take it away. It's all yours. Okay. Uh, do you feel, just want to... Feel free to introduce yourself if you like. Um, sorry. Try to get... Okay, anyways. Uh, yeah, so... Hi, I'm CJ Blaskovich. Hello. How's everybody doing? <laughs> My um, dinner is going to get cold. Right. Uh, okay. Today, you, you emailed me saying that you wanted to uh, address some things that you felt were inconsistencies in my videos about the Air Force. You, as I understand, are a U.S. Uh, Army sergeant, former U.S. Army sergeant. Is that correct? Yes, that is. Okie dokie. So uh, you can hit me with all the questions. Well, one thing I do want to ask you about is you did a video uh, called joining the military where you addressed stop loss and i'm just curious uh, as to what you actually know about it uh as i understand when you sign a contract to the military based on the movie stop loss and based on the contract i think we all signed uh they have a total like eight year retention if you're in for four years I don't know about the six-year contract or anything like that, but uh, they can call you back to the military if they need you to or prevent you from leaving the military if they need you to stay. That's my understanding. Um, well, I actually did get stop-lost when we deployed to Iraq in 2007. Thank you, Guts yeah. and Glam, for $15 to the USO. Go ahead. Anyways, uh, yeah, so... Stop loss is actually just when you can't really be logistically replaced during a deployment. So they have to keep you for extra time. And the whole eight-year contract, you have a set amount of active duty, and then you go inactive ready reserve. So if they absolutely need you, which they don't, you can get called back during that time. Okay. Well, the video you're referencing, I don't even remember making because <laughs> I okay. made, made thousands of videos. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to quote it or anything. Well, I just wanted to, you know, discuss that and kind of get past any misconceptions about it. A commenter wants to know uh, whether or not they say interesting is CJ questioning whether or not you've stolen Valor. What's your take on that? Um, honestly, I don't think you've stolen Valor. However, there uh, are just to be a blunt, lot of... I don't know what that means. Is that like veteran status or? Uh, I believe that stolen Valor is more, uh, you're claiming that you like earned awards or ranks that you haven't. I, I don't recall doing that at any point. I know, I know I got senior airman at one point, but I lost it pretty quickly when I took off all my clothes in front of the uh, first shirt. So <laughs> that didn't work out. Well, I mean, the first four ranks in the Air Force are all automatic. So uh, you have to test for senior airman. Mm, no, I, I that's I, not what I read. Right. Well, I was actually in the Air Force and I literally took a test that I had to pass in order to become senior airman. Well, first off, that's not what the website says. And second of all, I've had a lot of family that was Air Force. Okay, and well, I, don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what test it. I took then, because I took a test and they said it was for rank. So I was at Tinker Air Force Base. I always see people saying you didn't even finish basic, but. Yeah, I'm that's just... pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was I was pretty scared I was going to get washed back because we had a Gomer pile on our, our flight. A guy who was putting his jacket on inside out, couldn't put his shoes on the right feet, and he was a fucking giant. So uh, he's, he's a pretty intense guy, but no, he did wind up getting washed back because he literally like seemed like he was going to have a mental breakdown at any point, and it wasn't like the 
crying type. It was like the I'm going to kill someone mental breakdown. So eventually he got washed back with a couple other people, um, a couple of criers. And that was intense, too, because the guy came up sobbing hysterically outside the uh, the door that we were in in basic. But no, I was I was uh, never washed back. I, I graduated basic on time, surprisingly. Well, I don't I don't know if they wash entire flights back because of one person, but no, no, no. They didn't wash the whole flight back. They just washed that uh, the individuals back who didn't, you know, if they had so many marks on their name, they'd be held back. Like if you couldn't figure out how to clean your locker right, if you couldn't figure out how to uh, make your bed right, then you do that so many times you get washed back. So you have to do an extra one or two weeks. Oh, yeah. We had people like that and quitters and stuff like that. Yep. Of course, I mean, if you're a quitter, you don't really go home at the end of that cycle. You have to go through more. Yeah, I saw which... they, they have this this crew and they, they wear the vests. So the runners wear the vests, uh, the reflective vests, if they ever tried to run off base and escape basic. And then you have the people who are crippled or injured who are also part of that crew and the people who just can emotionally handle it. Um, yeah, they were all part of that. And they just had to, to wait for however long to see if they're still manageably considerable from the military or not. Well, the only guy we had who had to wear a running vest was on suicide watch. So, Oh yeah. Suicide watch people too. It's pretty intense. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy. I personally did cry a couple times. I cried one time and that's when I passed uh, my, I think it was my final locker inspection because it was like so overwhelming because they were failing people and, it was really intense for me. So when I passed, I started tearing up, but that's about it. Fortunately. Yeah. Um, of course, in one video, you did complain about you were put in the dying cockroach and berated. Right. Um, that was a, a drill sergeant who actually got, as I understand, forcefully removed from the Air Force because she wound up punching a trainee. But what she had done, it wasn't so much the dead cockroach, because that is, as I understand, a really effective exercise. It was more so that she and another sergeant were pointing and laughing at us, and that felt um, pointless. It didn't really seem like it had a training purpose. It just kind of seemed like someone was sadistically trying to torture someone with exercise while mocking them. So uh, it wasn't anything I filed a complaint or anything. I just fucking dealt with it and bitched about it on a YouTube video later. Well, that's typically, like, common, because, like, we actually had a guy, uh, I'm not going to say his actual last name, but his, our senior drill sergeant basically named him his last name, followed by, you fat fuck. <laughs> All right. I mean, no, like I said, I, I didn't, I didn't raise that, a complaint. But... It was just me bitching about it in a YouTube video. Like, I, I understand that laughing at someone isn't against the UCMJ and dead cockroach isn't against UCMJ. Nothing they did was against the UCMJ. So there's nothing I could really bitch about yeah. other than, you know, say it in a video. I don't fucking like that. I also didn't like how she would uh, withhold our letters from family members, which actually is against the air force policy or whatever. You can't withhold that shit. But uh, other than that, she was pretty much in line. That was just the one fucked up thing. It was a lot of emotional manipulation from her, which is weird because the tech sergeant was the total opposite. He was just like, grow the fuck up, be men, blah, 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 and not so much manipulation or any of that shit. He would just get typical mad. He's kind of a badass. And she was just like really, really a bit too far with a lot of shit. Yeah. They can be like that. Anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Seer Indoc. Sure. What about it? So why did you call it just plain Seer for so long? Because, I mean, they're two completely different things. Seer training. It's uh, Seer indoctrination training. I, I said repeatedly I was only in there for like two weeks. So that implies the indoctrination. I said it was on Medina. Uh which is an annex of Lackland, which is also a clear indicator that I was talking about indoctrination. Never once said I was uh, up here in Washington, which is where Seer actually is established. So calling it Seer yeah. is, is, is pretty accurate because it is Seer. It's just the indoctrination course. 
No, no, it's not. Well, if I abbreviate it, something, it comes down to opinion. <laughs> I said I failed out of the the training repeatedly. And by failed, I mean I like fucking quit because I didn't want to kill a rabbit. So it sounds like semantics. Well, you can put the difference between seer and indoc in semantics, but like from what I have, you know, read, uh, it's one week of basically physical exercise and seeing if you can give a course and then one week out in the field. Yeah, I think that's actually more accurate. So, oh, you know what? Okay, so I went a week early. Um, they, they, I think, yeah, they start a course every two weeks. So that makes sense. Um, I went a week early and was just basically cleaning shit for the, uh, the fuck. I don't know what it's called. It's that big building that has all the different people. It had sailors in it and they had, uh, or seamen in it, I guess. It had, um, combat controllers. It had... Uh, pararescue. I don't know. Yeah, I think it had pararescue, if, if I'm remembering that right. We all shared the same building, and we were waiting for our turn because we were there a week early. So I was doing one week of that, then I did the one week of training, and right before they went out to the field, uh, that's when I said I don't want to kill the rabbit, which I would have to do in the field. And uh, when everybody came back, they seemed pretty fucked up in the head. Um, one guy said, you know, you're pretty smart to have not done that. Because apparently one of the rabbits woke up halfway through this, them skinning it. They didn't kill it proper by sticking their foot on its head and yanking its head uh, away from its spine. So it's, you know, it ceased to live. Uh, so it woke up, shook itself off the hooks or whatever they had it on, and was running through the, the woods screeching with half its skin off. So they were pretty uh, mortified. And they were also talking about how they had to drink swamp water. Just straight up swamp water. So... I didn't really regret dropping out of that after hearing their stories. See, the problem I have with those stories, um, first off, everything I've heard about Seer, uh, when they kill the rabbit, it's actually a chop to the back of the neck. Okay. So, well, I mean, I was there, so... I mean, I was like, I listened to them talk about how they were supposed to kill it and all that shit, like... In real life, so it sounds like you're like you you're in the position of like skeptical as to whether or not I was even there, which is kind of laughable. Well, lots of people are skeptical of basically anything you have to say. So, well, that's because they're morons and they don't pay attention. So, like, I mean, you're gonna find out as you ask me more questions that I got the answers. So, I mean, continue, please. Well, another thing is about the is the unfiltered swamp water. Yeah, I wasn't there. That's just what that, I was told. They were told to they, they actually, were told they were told to empty out all their clean water and fill it with dirty, nasty swamp water, and then drink that. But the thing is, if they were forced to fill it with swamp water, they probably would have gotten extremely sick extremely quickly and the cadre would have gotten in trouble i'm telling you when they came back they all looked fucked up i can only tell you what they told me i was working on goseer.com or dot net or whatever the fuck it was so i could only go off what they told me i can tell you a lot more about shit that i actually saw which you know i'm sure you have questions about Well, I'm assuming that the whole story where you almost stumbled into a snake nest was you guys doing a perimeter walk for PT. No. Uh, what happened was they put a bunch of rocks on our back, in a backpack, and they, I don't, I don't remember how we got there. Maybe we were just going on a hike or some shit. But it was near the golf course at Lackland Air Force Base. There's a swamp near that area. And... uh well, not really. A, it's like a swamp that's kind of long. 
and then it goes kind of it's kind of like shape like shape like a giant sperm where there's a thick head and then there's a tail and we kind of got in at the tail and we we're supposed to go through the, the thick sperm head area and going up that tail that's when they said there was a black mamba or whatever the fuck which apparently exists in texas uh i didn't see it not at all no the people behind black mambas me, are only in northern are only in like eastern africa well, let's find out what a black swamp snake is doing in Texas. I'm going to Google it real quick. Black mambas are also semi-arboreal, which means they live more in trees. I typed in black swamp snake. One moment. You can You can talk about other stuff if you'd like while I look this up. Well, if they were having you walk through this swamp, it was obviously for, like, PT or some shit. Okay. But uh, Hold on. I just typed in Black Mamba, Texas, and yeah. It said, uh... You're talking about having nests of them in Texas. Black Mamba attack in Texas... Like, did you research it before you started accusing me of shit? Because, like, it's very clearly in Texas. Yes, I've researched it. Well, did, well no, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't Google Black Mamba Texas because there's shit all over the place about it being in Texas. <laughs> here, I'll, I'll show everybody what I'm talking about. So, as everyone can see here, I just fucking searched it. I'm like a regular human being normally would. It says Black Mamba attack in Texas right here. It's the first thing that fucking shows up. This guy's accusing me of not ever encountering a black mamba in Texas. <laughs> Can you fucking Google it, dude? There's another one. Black mamba at North Mountain, Texas. Like, can you just admit you're wrong on this one? Because you're, like, really fucking wrong. Okay. I just Googled it for everybody. They all saw that you're wrong. Well, I'm looking at facts and shit about black mambas on national geographic well have you tried actually googling videos of black mambas in texas so what is a black mamba doing in texas if it's not something that happens black mamba attack in texas another one let's see 45 rallies snakes under <laughs> texas home <laughs> Venomous snakes of Texas surviving. See, I googled exactly what you said you did. I'm, dude, you, I'm, you can't really argue with that. I said Google. It's, it's Bing. It's uh, The search result I'm showing is Bing because it's like what was pulled up. But as the Black Mamba videos here, North Mountain, Nico, Texas, Texas. <sighs> Like I said, the guy behind me said he saw a black mamba. I didn't see it, but I immediately began slowly backing away, and we took a different path, just like I said. Go figure. Ooh, Texas hunting forum. <laughs> we can always come back to this if you have more questions, or we can really dive deep into the black mamba if you want to. I mean, I'm sure you feel like you have many points in which you can confront me on. Or we well, can just debate whether or not Black Mambas are in Texas by reviewing videos of them in Texas or something. Ooh, what's this? I see a link to a BBC Scottish collector. Okay. It says that they're one of the Even fastest land snakes. So what would they be doing in a swamp? That is a good question. I wonder if there's like a thing that says black mamas go in swamps. Swamp. Hmm. Well, I'm going to look at this Wikipedia article. Uh, oh species is both terrestrial and arboreal. Inhabits savanna <laughs> woodland, rocky slopes, and some regions dense forest. Okay.
yeah, they're saying not in Texas, which... They don't say not in Texas. You're just not finding Texas. <laughs> Because I've I literally Googled videos of them in Texas. There's literally, yeah, there's that link that says Texas hunting forum and then talks about black mambas, yeah? Yeah. Are, are we, are we going to drag out the, this? this Sure, we got well, a lot to cover, but if you really want to obsess over this, well, there are definitely going to be snakes in a swamp, anyways. Okay, so I'm Let, pretty let's, sure they covered. Let's, let's get literal, though. Okay, somebody who was behind me because I was taking point, they looked at some snake in the water. They said, That's a black mamba. It's like a few feet away from you. Back the fuck up. I'm backing the fuck up. I don't even know if they told me to back the fuck up, but I backed the fuck up anyway. And then I took well, it could have been a cotton mouth. I don't know what the fuck it was. I didn't even see it. It's just like I told you guys. It's the one person behind me who said, that's a black mamba. So I backed the fuck well, up. Well, that person I didn't, is I don't need. Maybe they were, you know? Okay. What are we debating here? <laughs> but if they were making you go through... A swamp there was probably a safety briefing and first off you were on point which i don't i really don't think I, okay. danger. I, I wasn't told to look out for snakes no i wasn't also i don't think we had a safety briefing and the 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 guy who was in the the week after my class he had a heart attack because of uh safety and competencies by the cadre so i wouldn't say that they're the most competent bunch if he didn't tell them that he was having chest pains, oh no, and he no, had a heart yeah, attack, no, I that's had on him. Uh, well, sure, yeah, I had chest pains too, but I actually trusted in the cadre. I thought they were not, knew what they were doing. I didn't have a heart attack, but I had fucking serious chest pains because when you're wearing seventy five or seventy nine pounds of rock on your back for four miles, and you're supposed to go in that four miles in under an hour, that can cause serious uh, depletion of blood flow to your chest because of how heavy the straps are. We didn't have those those backpacks that were all encompassing of your chest to make the weight more uh, proportionate across the front. We just had little little straps on our our sides right here. And as I understand, your body needs to have good circulation in order to not fucking die. So they didn't have very good backpacks, and we were being pulled down by those and while exercising. Uh, there was this guy who had just a fucking he was like a ballerina or a dancer or some shit like that, and he had a compression on his stomach, and that caused his rib to go into his heart penetrate it he died you just can't fuck with that shit gotta have loose clothing loose loose wearing gear and all that did you have other stuff though other than snakes yeah let's let's do it um but as far as you talking about the 70 pound packs 79 i yeah. think you do realize it gets a lot harder in other phases of seer right I, i'm, I mean, not, I'm have... not debating the difficulty of seer i'm just saying that doing that caused someone to have a heart attack so maybe ease off a little bit especially i think an improvement of gear would be optimal just making sure that you have backpacks that aren't putting all the pressure on your shoulders or your side your fucking where your arms connect to your torso uh it would be nice not to have things that cut right through your circulation and have more evenly distributed weight so you could actually more effectively finish the four miles in the right amount of time without dying of a heart attack or nearly dying. Well, I'm pretty sure that's bullshit because once you get to airborne training, you have to Sorry, go. Sorry, what part of that to... what part of that is bullshit? The the advice that you should have evenly evenly proportionate weight on your chest or that it even happened. What what part are you saying is bullshit? I'm saying the part where it even happened is bullshit because in I, I love when training, people who weren't there tell me I didn't go through what I went through. It's pretty fucking like ignorant. And it from my perspective, it's like unbearably funny. Because it's like it's like it's like you just say, Hey, I just fucking fucked my wife and someone's like, I think that's bullshit and you're like, 
who the fuck are you to say it's bullshit? This is my life. It's, it's, it's what I just went through. And you're having someone say you didn't do it. And you're like, well, what fucking fantasy world are you living in? Like you have, no, I, you have no actual clue. It would be nice if you had like proof. Could you stop interrupting me for five fucking seconds, please? I'll give you five. Airborne training, they actually make you wear like 70 pounds of gear, full battle rattle, and you have to do four miles in under like 36 minutes. Yeah, that's cool. So that's why I say what you're saying is bullshit where you're having a heart attack. Do you have actual gear in the backpacks? Yes. Okay, so that's the difference. When you have a concentration of gravel, 79 pounds, you have all the weight pulling in a very small compressed area so you have all the weight pulling in one direction when you have 75 pounds of gear like i did at osan air force base uh distributed among your whole back that's gear pulling up high that's gear pulling down low that's gear pulling in the middle and therefore it's not all the pressure in one section of your shoulders and it's more evenly distributed especially if you have a couple cross straps in the front that's more even distribution and therefore less likelihood you're going to cut off as much circulation in such a concentrated manner and possibly trigger a heart attack like with that gentleman. Gravel's fucked up. You should try you should try throwing nothing but gravel on your back sometime. And those tiny little backpacks they gave us. See how that feels compared to, you know, that really wide out area that gear offers. Like I said, I, I experienced both at Osan with what you're talking about at Osan, the training exercises that we did for North Korea, potential invasion. We had exactly what you're talking about. We had an M4 on the front. Uh, we may or may not have had an M9 on our leg. I don't remember. Uh, we had our gas masks. We had those big ass backpacks on our back. And it was nice because the weight on the front helped center your gravity. So you weren't falling on your ass all the time. You just lean forward a lot more, but the gun in the front would help you a lot with that distribution of weight. So that was real handy. I would have preferred that any day over 79 pounds of gravel because that fucking sucked. Got more stuff? What's up with everybody thinking I'm crying? I Don't worry about it. We're, we're here to ask questions and answer questions. Yeah. Well, there's also, uh, you tell this story about a guy drowning in the swamp. No, nah, he didn't drown. He almost drowned. I saved his fucking life. Well, there's an alternate story where you said they let him drown and then the cadre pulled him out. Mm-mm, that's not a quote. And you said the cadre pulled him? Oh, no, no, no. That's the swimming pool. That was Singer. There was a, a airman, his airman singer. Uh, I think he was a one. Stri- he was a one stripe when I got there, and he's a two stripe by the time he left. He kind of fucking hated my guts, which is fair. I, I pissed him off because I went on when they made appointed me leader of the indoctrination course because they they rotate people out every couple of days. They made me the longest leader for some reason. I think I amused them or something. I, I think it was a punishment. But singer hated me real quick when I went on a power trip. Because uh, I went out to the four-mile walk. I was like, put on your packs. Let's get going right now. And everyone was pissed off because, you know, I was... Singer had gone through and failed out of... I think it was pararescue or... Com- it's probably pararescue. He failed out of it. Um, he was in the group... Whoever swims the most. That's, that's what group he was in. Uh, the point is, he tried for that. He failed. Um, and he told me a story about how he had drowned in the pool. Because they have very extreme shit that they make you do in pararescue or combat control or whichever the fuck it was. Uh, And because he actually drowned, uh, I don't think they let him do it again or some shit like that. I don't remember specifics of that, but I do know that he told me that he had drowned and they had to bring him back. That's totally separate than the swamp story where this dude had gotten in front of me. I was no longer point. Um and he was going off to the middle of the swamp. I was going off to the side. In other words, he didn't follow me. Uh, and I told him, I said, this is a bad fucking idea. We don't know how deep that is. And he just keeps walking, ignoring me. And he starts to dip like you do in swamps. 
And suddenly, it was like instant, he just goes under. So I bolted to grab him, and I pulled him to my side. I was taller than him. He was a really short guy. So that was a fun experience. He was only under for like 10 seconds. So those are two separate stories. Because they're two different events. Well, I've watched five different videos of yours about your Air Force experience. And that one, no, you you definitely said that you were doing that in Seer. And doing, they let doing, the guy doing, drown. Doing what in Seer? The swamp? That they that they let the guy drown in the swamp. No, that was before Seer. He did that. He wasn't even part of Seer, I don't think. Because I don't think there's a pool section of Seer. I think the pool section was mostly for pararescue or combat control or some shit. Because I don't remember ever going to the pool. Maybe they didn't let us go in the pool or some shit like that. I don't know. Like, the pool may have been closed. I don't know what happened there. But I never actually encountered the pool at all. I don't know why we would. We're fucking Seer. We're, we're people who train people what to do when they fucking crash in a plane or whatever. So why would we be in a swimming pool? I, I think the I think the swimming is for people who actually have to do operations where you're dropped into the water. I guess you could I guess you could crash in the water. Maybe that would be why. I don't know. Well, according according to the SEER website, you actually have to do scuba at some point. Yeah, I think that's at uh, the Spokane base. I think I saw pictures of them doing that when I was building the site. Go seer.com. You can look up you can look up me having built the site on uh it says Gregory Daniel at the bottom in the credits. In my pictures from the Air Force, you see Daniel on my chest. Um yeah, it's, it should be in the Wayback Machine. You go to wayback.org or whatever the fuck the site is. Go to go, no, go seer.com. Well, there you go. So you know I was in the indoctrination course for a fact, which means I definitely graduated basic. So that debunks the dumbasses who say I never did. But I think it's weird that they would have had you build the website because they actually have people to do that, you know? Well, I mean, are you arguing whether or not the website happened? Because it fucking happened. My name's on it. So now you're just arguing, like, hard facts. I'm just saying it's weird. Oh, okay. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about... Well, actually, in two of your videos, you do mention that you volunteered for Iraq. Yep, I did. I was scheduled for a March deployment. Uh, when I met, when I volunteered at Tinker, I was scheduled to leave March 2006. Would that be accurate? Yeah, I think March 2000. No, I don't know. Might have been March 2007. I think, yeah, I think it was March 2007. And uh, I also volunteered to go earlier because they said they wanted uh, backups to go to deployment, like just in case somebody uh has some extraordinary condition like i had a i think his name was wise there was this guy who uh, bailed out on getting deployed because he said he had a hand problem uh the same guy hung out with me on a regular basis and he would kick my ass at video games so he's saying he couldn't hold a rifle gonna squeeze a trigger but he could beat me at fight night round three like it was nobody's business so i was just like fucking confused by that but he was the kind of guy that I would go in the place of as a volunteer. I volunteered for basically everything I could because I was super true bearman. I tried to be the best I could be. It's called the poster boy a couple times, uh, airman, because I really had my hopes high. I believed in the military, all that shit. And basic when they asked you who here joined because they're patriots of the United States. They believe in serving the military and they believe that we are just or whatever. Uh, I raised my hand and one other person raised their hand and there was 400 people in the fucking room. So that was my first rude awakening. Uh, I believe I was one of those dumbasses who believed the movies I saw, where I was like, "Ah, oh, American hero, patriot, blah blah blah, serve our country, and uh, we're the good guys." And then everyone raised their hand for college when they said, "Did you join for college?" The GI Bill. So that was really upsetting. The point is, is I was super troop, so I volunteered for everything I could. I volunteered to go to Texas for a, a temporary duty assignment. Or we guarded the jets that were on call to protect the president if there was an attack in Texas. 
uh, you know, while he was there, just a backup precautionary thing. I don't know why the fuck they did that. I don't know why it's such a big deal, but apparently they have jets ready to scramble. Not confidential information, by the way. It's just basic information was on the news. Um, anyway, so I also volunteered to go to uh, Cold Lake, Canada. I was there for a month, protecting the AWACS. Tinker Air Force Base has AWACS, which are those giant planes with the giant domes that send out radiation everywhere as a radar to, detection, to detect shit. It's featured in uh, Transformers. Uh, I volunteered for quite a few things. I went to pre-deployment training for the, the volunteer to be a replacement for someone else. I was certified marksman. I was able to go a week early to pre-deployment training and uh, get trained on a, a different kind of scope on the M4. That was nice. Uh, got in a little scuffle with a couple guys there. I'm a problematic person. Uh, I, I, I got certified, I think, on the shotgun there. And also I volunteered for SWAT when I was in Osan, Korea. I went back to Lackland to get trained on uh, Mark 19, which was a uh, grenade launcher, machine gun type motherfucker. It was intense. We shot at a tank. Those are fun as fuck. We shot at a tank. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah they're pretty cool. Yeah, pretty fucking cool. But the shitty thing is, is we weren't firing explosives. We were just firing little metal things. I'm like, how the fuck do we know if we hit that tank out there if I'm just firing little metal duds? And they said, you'll see a little flicker of light. And I was like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> but I fired it. Yeah, I fired it anyway. And I got a little fucking flicker. I hit the fucking tank. I was pretty fucking proud of myself. That was pretty great because we only got like, I don't know how many rounds we got, but it wasn't very many. So I was really worried I wasn't going to hit shit. One thing I hated firing at Lackland was the fucking grenade mount for an M16. It hurt so fucking bad to fire that. My shoulder, I don't think I pitted the butt of the rifle right. So that sucked ass. But everything else, I love firing. It's fun. Anyway, uh, point is I did volunteer for pre-deployment training. Um, I got pre-deployment training, but I was never selected. And then before March came around, when I was actually supposed to do my normal slot, because they didn't pick me up for my volunteering early. Uh, I volunteered for South Korea. And when I got South Korea, I cried because I was so happy that they got South Korea. I wanted to go to South Korea so bad. And when I went there, a lot of my life changed because I had no real clue as to how foreign nations operate outside Canada. Because Canada is basically the same thing, only people are a lot less fat there. So, yeah. You have any questions about that? Well, if you were such a super troop, then how come the, uh, you know, out-processing paperwork I've seen, basically all of your awards except for marksmen are basically participation trophies. Participation trophies? Okay. Yes. I mean, I have, I have, I have documents of my... Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing with the military. I do have documents that say... You know, he's a fucking outstanding airman, yada, yada, yada. But I feel like they just copy and paste that shit. Like the, they do. Yeah, so, like, doesn't that answer your question? Like, when people just copy and paste shit saying how good of an airman you are, like, when do you actually see a legit report on someone that's not just sucking their dick for the sake of everyone being friends and getting promoted? Like, I did volunteer for all those places, so... Are you saying they were supposed to say that I went to Cold Lake, Canada? They were supposed to say that I went to Texas and all that shit? No, I'm just saying if you were so high speed, low drag, why didn't you, you know, get anything for it? Why didn't I go get anything for pre-deployment training or going to Cold Lake, Canada? No, you got no awards. What awards? Participation what, trophies. What was it? What awards was I supposed to get? What awards was I supposed to get? I don't know. Something beyond... Like, a, a certified marksman. I volunteered to go places. <laughs> I, don't know what the, I don't know what the fuck yeah, award I... What award was I supposed to get? You're not telling me. You're a you're former sergeant, and you were <laughs> you were in the Army. You should know what awards, right? What, what awards was I supposed to get? You're telling me I should have rewards. What what awards should I have? Well, we even had this one guy who was incredibly fucking stupid, and he still got like an army commendation award. Okay. And I'm looking at yours right now. I, I, and unfortunately, it's... I was in the air force, so I kind of get a 
Air, Air, Air Army Accommodation Award. I did work with the Army, though, at, uh, I think, one or two points. So. Well, you should have got something beyond National Defense Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Korean Defense Service Medal, Air Force Expeditionary Service Ribbon, that's, that's and good. Air Force Training Ribbon. That's more than I thought I had. Did you get Marksman? I was a Marksman. Here we got that ribbon, yeah, too. says... There you go. Says what Expert else? Marksman. What other award? Rifle. What other award could I have gotten? What am I missing? What did I fuck up on? You would have ended up with basically something other than participation. Well, give me a fucking example. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, you, you're saying I should have a reward, but you don't a award. You don't even know what the fucking award is. What award was I supposed to get? The Purple Heart? Because I wasn't even deployed to a war zone, so... <laughs> I don't know. I shoot myself in the foot, or what the fuck was I supposed to do? You would have gotten something that wasn't a participation well, you award. Don't you don't even fucking actually know what I would have got. And I, it was more than participation. Not everybody got the, the marksman shit. So that was pretty cool. Everybody has to qualify with a rifle. Right, qualifying is only hitting so many out of 30 bullets. I hit like 29 out of 30 or 30 out of 30, so they said, you're a fucking marksman, good job. Gave me a ribbon. <laughs> uh, what, so you're debating whether or not I fucking suck as an airman, which I'm not debating, really. I'm just saying that I volunteered for a lot of shit. I, I represented the the CAC or whatever the fuck it was. The, the nah, that's, that's a fucking ID card, CAC. It's something... Something uh, involving C's it has uh, you know those there's airmen that would volunteer to be the flight representative for charities. I was that guy, so I volunteered for that too. Didn't give me a ribbon for that, but fucking did it anyway because it was nice to put on my uh, promotion documents or whatever the fuck. So when you know when you go up for sergeant or whatever, you can say all the shit that you did. That's cool. Well, you also say you qualified for shotgun, and I'm looking at military education, and it's got the Mark 19, which is always fun. Uh, uh, I did the M249 Bravo, the M240. Uh, M16, obviously, was in basic. M4 was at Tinker, I think. M9. I, I, did, I fucked up the hand grenade thing pretty bad. They didn't even let me throw the second hand grenade. Uh, but as far as a shotgun, I don't, I don't actually remember the shotgun. I just remember them telling me I was going to get certified on a shotgun for, for pre-deployment training. I don't remember firing it. I remember getting certified on a ATV. That was fucking lit. They're like, who wants to get certified to drive around an ATV? And I'm like, fucking me. And we did it. We went around the fucking, um, what base was that? I think it was Florida. I think we went to pre-deployment training in Florida. Um, maybe. Pretty sure. And uh, that was great. That was fun. I love that. But, yeah, all it says under your military education is the Mark 19, Air Force Training Course, uh, Security Forces Apprentice, and Basic Military Training. All right. So we've successfully established that people who say I never went through basic are really, really stupid. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> what else is there? What are, what are the questions you have? Well, here's something that always bothered me about your, you know, stripping story for Korea. Yeah, go for you, it. You, you say a lieutenant colonel told you that you didn't have to, you know, tidy anyone's post for them. Yeah, he said he was uh, he was sick and tired of the Rod Squad being treated poorly because you can't treat the Rod Squad poorly because it's not a punishment. It's just basically you being in holding until you can be seen in court or whatever you need to do. Whatever reason you're on Rod Squad, you're there until you're dealt with. And so when they give you a punishment, like cleaning up other people's mess on the post, they said that that's not something that he wanted. So this lieutenant colonel made this announcement to everybody. And that was the rule of law from that point on. Because when Lieutenant Colonel tells everybody this is the way it is, that's it. So senior airman decided to tell me one day that I was supposed to clean the post. And I said, Lieutenant Colonel said I couldn't. He said we weren't supposed to. Then uh, first lieutenant 
came out. I don't remember which is first or second lieutenant. Is the silver one first lieutenant or second lieutenant? He had a silver single bar. Silver bar, I believe that's second lieutenant. Anyway, he, he came out, saluted him. He said, clean up that post. I said, a lieutenant colonel told me not to. You're a fucking silver bar. <laughs> like, I can't follow your order because a fucking lieutenant colonel told me to. So then the first shirt comes in and he says uh, that he's going to write me a letter of reprimand. And I haven't gotten any disciplinary documentary or documents to this point other than a 341. A 341 is like when you're in basic, they just punish you all the time for stupid shit. Like if you didn't tie your shoelaces right, or you didn't shave all the way, they say 341. If you get so many 341s, you get washed back in basic. So I had a few of those. They don't keep track of 341s after you leave basic as far as I know. It's kind of like a stupid slap on the wrist or whatever. So I hadn't had any paperwork in the fucking two and a half years I was in so far. And then they said they're going to give me a letter of reprimand for following orders from a lieutenant colonel, which really pissed me off. And I was already on the edge. I was already suicidal. I'd already been diagnosed with major depression or whatever. Uh, they said it was a major depressive episode. And then later on, they said it was chronic depression from the psychiatrist. Anyway, uh, so I was already on my own mental space, and they told me they were going to write me paperwork for the first time in my life for following orders. So I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm so done. And I had a meltdown, took off my clothes in front of the first shirt and a senior airman who was also in the room. So what questions did you have about that? Well, why didn't the lieutenant colonel disseminate his order among basically everyone? Right. Well, he did. He, he made announcements throughout the whole fucking squadron. Every flight, he would visit the flight and tell them that based on my recollection problem is the the catch to all this is he was no longer the active lieutenant colonel we had a new lieutenant colonel that just swapped out a week a month something like that and really recent so there was new leadership but there was no change in the announcement so that new lieutenant colonel hadn't given us different orders so i still going by the orders of the old lieutenant colonel well when the new lieutenant colonel comes in his orders no longer stand I don't know what the fucking orders are. Nobody updated me. But if you, if somebody said that to me, if somebody said, we got a new lieutenant colonel, the old lieutenant colonel's orders are no longer standing, I'd be like, that fucking makes sense. Okay, I'll clean. But nobody said that to me. I, would, I told everybody, I said, the lieutenant colonel told me this. Your rank is lower. And everyone's like, fine, we'll just take you to the first shirt. We'll just take you to this person. We'll call a lieutenant. We'll call whoever. You know. So, yeah, nobody communicated that orders changed just because he wasn't there. As far as I know, it was just squadron policy. Yeah, stuff changes when there's a change of command. That's basic fucking knowledge, dude. Nobody told me that the orders had changed. <laughs> so you have to be yeah. told that they've changed? So you're saying that every single time that there's new leadership, everything you've learned from the previous leadership is now wiped and you have to start completely over. Yeah. Nobody told me that. I was just following orders. At least the orders I thought I was supposed to follow. What are we debating here? Whether or not I didn't know that orders don't stand after the last colonel leaves. Because didn't, they didn't say, hey, this is orders from the new lieutenant colonel. They just said, this is orders from fucking senior M and whoever. Senior airman, whoever, doesn't fucking matter. Of course senior airmen don't fucking matter. That's what I'm saying. I got it from a senior airman, and then he tattled on fucking lieutenant, and lieutenant tattled on fucking <laughs> first shirt, and then the first shirt said he's just going to like me a letter of reprimand rather than talking to me about why I didn't do that. I'm just like, why, why is no one fucking talking to me? I'm not cleaning the post because it's someone who outranks all of you motherfuckers told me not to do it. I pay attention to rank. If you told me the new lieutenant colonel said that was not what I was supposed to do, I would have been like, okay, he has the same power. He has the same fucking rank. Even if he just had the same power, if even if he was just the new squadron commander and he somehow had a different rank and some perspective, then that's fine. But the leadership of the highest level in our squadron was telling me that I had to do this. So I was going to follow his. I didn't want to be fucking, I didn't want to disobey what that guy had said. Didn't you hear him? He said this, you fucking idiot. Why don't you follow orders? You know, I was following orders by the highest level. Nobody gave me a briefing on ooh, nobody gave me a briefing on shit being invalid. They never said, okay, those orders no longer stand. That was policy. It's basic fucking knowledge, dude. 
To you. Some people are jackasses. Maybe I'm a jackass. Moving on. Okay. And Sky was apparently with you in Korea as well. Was she? Yeah. She was she was off base. So my question is, was she there like just on a visa or did you actually put in the paperwork with the military? I don't know. They just had her there. It was it was part of uh, me signing up for two years instead of one, I think. I think I, this is a big, a hard thing because I've never thought about this or haven't thought about it for a while. But it was part of my, yeah, I think I was staying there for two years. They said you could stay here for one year and bring nobody with you or you could stay here for two years and bring uh, your spouse with you. And I was like, well, I can bring my spouse. So I went there for longer. That's why I was there for a year and a half. But yeah, like, if you were supposed to be living off post, like, there was this one thing you talked about with the cracked rotating plate in the microwave. Right. I was ghosting on base. They just made it standard to make sure that everyone was accounted for who was lower than sergeant on in the dormitories. So they would have me ghost. And they, they have a lot of people who live off base ghost. And the guy I was ghosting with, i.e., we both had a bed in there, but I didn't live there. Uh, he or someone before him or whoever fucking did it had uh, broken the plate and not replaced it. And they tried to make me replace it. And I'm like, dude, I haven't even been fucking living here. Why are you trying to make me replace this? And the first shirt agreed with me. Well, that's just weird to me because, I mean, if you were supposed to be living off post, you would have been... On able to able to what live off post they wouldn't have assigned you a stupid dorm right you should maybe type in ghosting oson i'll try that real quick ghosting dorms oson uh i don't see anything maybe i should use google Uh, there you go. It says it's ghosting against the rules. Um, it's saying I have an airman in my shop selecting to stay with his girlfriend's place the majority of the time rather than on his dorm. So, yeah, ghosting's a real thing. You're officially on base. I think they do that so they could say that you're ready to respond if something happens. They want to keep their numbers high or whatever. Maybe this is too much information, though. No, it just seems weird that they would have you. Because, I mean, how else would they contact you if you're not on base, if you're supposed to be at the ready? So there's like this really cool thing. It's called, called a cell, cell phone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. And they also, there's one time when I was, uh, I was, uh, I think I was being a rebel or something, refusing to shave. And uh, that's when the lieutenant colonel, the earlier one, confronted me sat down with me and said, I used to be a janitor. You know, we're all the same here. And uh, I want you to understand that, you know, we don't think, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember the fucking speech, but it was really good speech. Um, no, but they found me. They came out, grabbed me, took me back to base a couple of minutes. So it wasn't like a huge deal. I had to be obviously right outside the gate, but yeah, that was pretty close. Okay. I don't think I have any more questions. I just wanted to get some stuff sorted. Okay, shoot. I mean, did you already get everything sorted, or you have more stuff to sort? No, everything's pretty much sorted that I wanted to, you know, sort out. That's lit. Cool. All right, so thanks. Have yeah. a good one.